Dans cette exposition « Peace by Peace », il faut savoir qu'il y a un sous-entendu qui est euh, la paix, non nécessairement atteinte. Euh, « Peace by Peace », c'est pièce par pièce, morceau par morceau, bien sûr. Mais euh, ce sous-entendu de la paix, qui en anglais résonne dans le titre, serait comme un peu l'idéal non nécessairement achevé des projets artistiques que nous montrons. Un idéal qui serait obtenu par le biais d'une cohésion entre les cultures étrangères vivant à proximité, côte à côte, euh, au Canada, dans certains euh, milieux, en l'occurrence ici très précisément une usine à Hamilton, euh, ou un idéal à échelle plus globale que serait par exemple le rapprochement de mouvements qui auraient un peu les mêmes objectifs démocratiques de défense de la démocratie et qui euh, seraient rapprochés artificiellement par le biais de l'image, de la construction de l'image, à l'intérieur d'une œuvre unique qui ne nous parle pas d'un message, qui ne nous donne pas une solution, qui ne défend pas nécessairement clairement une cause autre que... Euh, sous-entendu l'idéal démocratique. Well, I think for me, my fascination with photography started at a very young age. I started to take pictures for myself at the age of eight, and then through school, it became a more and more intense activity for me until I started to study it at photography, but in the end, I was never as good as I wanted to be, and I became a promoter of other people's photographs instead of trying to take my own pictures. And whenever I look for new artists to represent, I'm really looking for work that I never would have thought of doing myself, something that is a surprise. So in the case of both Sanaz and Sarah, I was very interested in how the ideas that they're trying to propel forward or trying to illuminate or illustrate are no different than some of the ideas that people may have had a hundred years ago. But they're using the technology in a very state-of-the-art manner. And I'm fascinated by how people are able to grapple with all of this technology, but it's just another tool for them. Like, the pursuit remains the same, to have something important to say, something that is intensely personal, but they try to make it a more universal statement by the photographs that they make. So with the work of Sanaz Mazanani, it uh, helps me grapple with some of the more serious issues, political issues, that uh, are part of the media that we live in right now. And by that I mean the media is now 24-7. It used to be, you know, you would get the paper in the morning and then maybe at six o'clock at night you would turn on the television and find out what happened that day. Um, but now we can't avoid the media, that it interrupts our schedule constantly. And it's this noise that seems to be uh, in the background all the time. And sometimes you get overwhelmed with some of the seriousness of the issues and you know you, you just can't keep on top of everything and so this news cycle continues to go on but as individuals we need to back away from it and i find with sanaz's work she's made these beautiful photographs that combine very disturbing pictures in some cases and if your interest like first you get attracted by the design and there's something that we relate to and something quite soothing about the images when you first see them. They're quite large, they're quite beautiful, they're colorful. And then you want to go in and figure out what these pictures are made of, like how are they made. And then you start to see the individual pictures that create these beautiful kaleidoscopes. And you start to see, you know, protests, you start to see anger, you start to see people in conflict. And then you start to piece it together and it's not something that's very comfortable but we have the ability to step further away from them again and they just become another beautiful tapestry. And I find that an interesting way to deal with today's struggles. This exhibition includes seven photo-based pieces and a video. And so each of the circular photos um, include at least a pair of images, sometimes three, 
uh, uh, one that comes from the West and another that comes from the East. This particular piece includes an image of Berkeley uh, with a group of young people holding uh, signs with peace marks on it. And the other is actually a picture from Tripoli in Libya. And it um, has two soldiers where they've spray painted a garage door and it says, today Libya, tomorrow Wall Street. So what's really interesting for me is to think about how, you know, there's what's going on in California is affecting what's going on in New York, it's what's going on in Europe and, um, and then in the Middle East. The series um, uses images of the Arab Spring and the Occupy movement, or Indignez-vu, as uh, referred to in Spain and France, um, as a, a kind of coming together of really disparate ideas and disparate um, needs and requirements for, for us, but in a way, always this kind of betterment. And so I was really interested in building um, this kind of network pattern to think about how everyone is kind of intertwined. And so the work uses um, images that are found online, all existing through Facebook feeds and different um, digital kind of networks, and thinking about how those networks connect us through social media and how we might be able to learn about what's going on in other places through kind of a, 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 a different kind of lens, a new lens. Uh, imagining how um, the whole thing might be this kind of intricate weaving that holds together. The pairings are from places that I never visited and most of us haven't been to. So um, Paris is, uh, for example, paired with Cairo. Um, New York is paired with Sana in Yemen. And um, these pairings each allowed me to use different techniques as I wanted to create the patterns. So the patterns are informed by their colors and the composition of individual images, but also shape in different ways, different forms. So some of them kind of pulling out and pulling in, in this kind of field of circles as, as a form uh, that kind of is holistic and comes together again. The patterns uh, in this exhibition are informed by Islamic ornamentation. And the concept behind this that made me really want to use Islamic motifs was this idea of the transitory nature of being. So the concept that um, when you look at a pattern, you are able to allow your eye to kind of settle onto something and allow your mind to think of other things. So very meditative. So with this project by Sarah Angelucci, I found that when I first would describe the idea of the project, a lot of people would come to see the work, I think expecting something quite a bit different, that it sounds like a documentary project, and it very much is, but when you look at the photographs and sound and video components, it's certainly much larger or more expansive than what people come to expect out of something that sounds like a document. In her case in particular, she was very interested in showing a bit of the, the life or the world around this Copley Apparel Company, but something that meant much more than just what happens in this building. It's very much a microcosm of Canada, the way that immigrants come to this place from many different places, and how each person comes together to work towards a common goal. And in this case, it happens to be making men's suits. And in doing the project, it started with her idea to photograph a lot of the different steps of a process that goes into making a suit. And I, a documentary photographer would have gone in and photographed each person at their workstation. And the fact that she started as a drawer and painter, that she's used to making art objects as her first goal or the prime goal of her work. And those photographs would have been very uninteresting because there would have been a lot of visual noise. And in the end, it would have gotten away from this beautiful sort of poetic illustration of what these people do on an individual basis. So 
by s choosing to photograph each person at the same spot, but offering a hint of what their uh, work practice is, she's able to bring the viewer into a world that we wouldn't have access to otherwise. And we sort of see this formation of something coming through all of their individual labors. And then as she worked on the process, she realized it was much more about just that. So she needed to get the voices of the people because she very consciously chose not to photograph faces. And, but she wanted to make sure that their personalities came through. So that was the reason behind the sound component. So we could hear these people, we could learn something about them, we could find out their personality through things that they would say. To create this project, I was invited by the Art Gallery of Hamilton in 2016 to consider um, a project for Canada 150 because my family, my parents and extended family immigrated to Hamilton in the 1950s um, after the war to build a better life for themselves. Uh, my father worked in a steel factory called Stelco for 27 years and my mother's first job was in a factory called Copley Apparel and this factory has been in continuous operation since 1883 and they make men's business suits. The project is called Piecework and that idea of piecework came about because that's what the workers do. The sewers sew piece by piece to create these suits. There are 120 some odd pieces in a man's business suit. The other very important component to remember in this project is that these sewers are primarily immigrant women. So here we have a factory that creates suits for men and the people behind the scenes that have very little visibility are immigrant women. So when my mother first came it was primarily European immigrants. Now there are over 30 languages spoken in this factory. So really for me in a way this factory represents a kind of microcosm of, of Canada itself which is a country of immigrants, right? When I set up this studio, I photographed the workers, the sewers, demonstrating for me these gestures that they do over and over and over again because they, they do these gestures hundreds and thousands of times a week. And I was also very interested in how this work becomes a kind of extension of their bodies and how the fabric is a kind of extension of themselves as well. And so if you look very closely at their hands, at their jewelry, at their skin tone, you can begin to, you know, whether they're old or young, you can really begin to create a kind of portrait of someone, you know, in these, in these images. So another component of this project are these pattern pieces. And so when I was touring the factory, I investigated all the different departments and I came upon the pattern department. They make their own patterns for these suits. And I asked one of the pattern makers who's been there for many years, do you have any older patterns? And she said, in the basement of the factory. So the chairman of the company came down with me. He'd never been in the basement. And there were hundreds and hundreds of these old patterns. So this one, I think is from, can't, I can't read it. it, might be from the 1980s. There, this one's from 1961. So, uh, what I did to create these pieces, which are a uh, collage, is to actually scan, this is the actual color of the patterns, was to scan them on a very large scanner bed individually, and then I collaged them together to create this very dynamic uh, composition. I'm a sower. I'm a sower. I am 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 a presser. I am a sower. A thread connects us. We are connected by a thread. Every day I can sew 250 coats. 408 pieces. I sew 200 coats in day. 160 pieces. So another component of the exhibition is the sound installation, which is a very, very important part of the project. It's an eight-channel piece, and in this project, I interview 17 of the sewers who are telling me their stories. But it's not just a direct 
interview. Um, I actually created a work that's called the Sower's Chorus. So it's this idea that they are almost like a group of singers that come together at moments they all say and we sow and we sow and we sow and then it breaks down into these individual moments where they tell us a little bit about their lives, a little bit about why they came to Canada, a little bit about their jobs and what they do every day. So we really get a little bit deeper. The, the hands sort of give us an introduction and the sound piece gives us something much more personal in which we hear the tone of the voice, we hear their accents, we get to know a little bit where they came from and how they feel about their work as well. So uh, this is a, a very important component. And then the, the project sort of ends with the video, which is um, an elevator in the factory that's been there probably more than 100 years. The factory is very large, it's on four floors. And whenever there's a problem with the suit, they can send it up quickly between floors by putting it on the suit elevator. So although they have a very large shipping elevator, this elevator is just for quickly sending things up and down. And I thought it was like watching these suits dance with no bodies in them. I thought it was very, very beautiful. And it's the only place in the exhibition that we actually see the finished product, if you will. Although we never see anyone wearing the suits. cet idéal dont je parlais, euh, se réalise pour nous, spectateurs qui voyons ces œuvres, dans une, une structure qui est visible, qui reste visible dans toutes les œuvres, que ce soit cette dimension de, de mosaïque qui est construite à partir de répétitions d'un motif, mais qui garde l'attention très, très visible dans l'œuvre de Sanas Medinani, ou dans le cas du, du travail de Sarah, à différents niveaux, mais si je pense à Manodoro en particulier, le fait que euh, c'est dans la succession et dans la, la, la temporalité euh, qui se voit en, à travers l'exposition le, des, des 24 images que tout d'un coup quelque chose se reconstruit virtuellement, disons, dans l'espace de l'exposition, puisque l'unité n'est pas visible dans une œuvre, jamais, dans les deux cas. Le travail de l'artiste euh, invente ici une manière de parler de ces grandes questions. 